This public meeting of the City of Tallahassee Independent Ethics Board is now called to order on this day, August 17th, 2021 at 4 p.m. The board members are present here at City Hall along with members of the public. Please be sure to submit to Mr. Floyd a speaker form if you wish to speak at the appropriate time on the agenda. Others among the public are also attending this meeting through digital platform that is accessible at the board's website. With the assistance of Communications Department and the Information Technology Department, this meeting is live streamed on the Ethics Board Ethics, Ethics Office web page and we are recorded for future reference. There is a delay with the online communications and we should all be patient. We thank those members of the City of Tallahassee for their support. At this time, I would like to ask everyone to stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mr. Floyd, would you call the roll? Sure. Carlos Ray. Present. Wayne Graham. Here. Ernie Payne. Here. Ruby Barr. Present. Kristen Costa. Robin Blank. Here. Mr. Chair, we have a quorum. Thank you, Mr. Floyd. I'm now go over. Oh, did I? I'm oh, Smith. <laughs> I mean, this. Brian Smith, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> I'll now review the procedures for public comment and conducting a meeting. For those attending the meeting online, please make sure your microphone is muted. Last week, we asked the public to make requests by email to ethics at talgov.com by 1 p.m. on the day of the meeting if they wish to speak online on agenda or non-agenda items. Those who have submitted their names will be given a chance to speak as scheduled. For those who are present and wish to speak, please complete a request form and forward it to the ethics officer, Mr. Dwight Floyd. Has everyone received the agenda and supporting documents? Yes. The staff has asked to postpone agenda item 8A, the advisory opinion. They're conducting additional re research and will bring the discussion before the board in September. With regard to the agenda or procedures for conducting today's business, are there any questions or concerns? Now we'll move on to approval of the June 15th, 2021 minutes. Uh, only issue I saw was agenda item, uh, uh, item number seven in old business. We have an extra D on Mr. Payne's name on the third line. You are good. If we can take that out. <laughs> I don't know, I might be pained. Yeah, <laughs> not pained, but yeah. Any other comments yeah. on the minutes? Okay. Uh, other than the, with the re requested edits, do we have approval of the minutes? So moved. Second. Second from Ms. Bohr. The first from Ms. Bohr, second from Mr. Smith. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on to public comments on agenda items, Mr. Floyd. Yes, we have one public comment on agenda item nine by Mr. Ben Wilcox. All right, Mr. Wilcox. You want me to talk now or wait till you get to that? Uh, no, this is the time to speak on that. Okay, um, okay this is on the, uh, the annual report. Yes. I, did, I have a just a question about what, one line. That, Talking, talking about the creation of the Office of the Inspector General, um, and you say this action narrowed the scope of responsibility of the Ethics Board. I don't think it, I don't think it did, because the Ethics Board's scope of responsibilities you know, is defined in the Charter. So that's, that's my whole, that's my point. Good one, too. Any comment, any comments from the board or from the officer at this time? Um, when we get to the report, we can. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Ms. Wolfox. Any other comments? Mr. Ford? Any other forms? No, that's it. Moving on to office report. That's the officer report. I uh, hope you enjoyed your month off. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, of course, we were hard at work. But, uh, <laughs> um, and it was actually a good time for you and I both to take a break. Uh, it's my first time really taking a, 
I think they took about a week off at one point, which is um, gave me a chance to take a break. And Lucy just got back from New York. She took a break. Uh, we assisted HR with the delivery of human resource and workforce development with the delivery of the um, ethics training. Uh, it is now, at this point, it's over 3,000 people have taken the training. Uh, it went very, very smoothly uh, with very few problems. When they ran the problems, they called me and I assisted. Um, I worked on the annual report uh, and um, did ethics training as we do every month. Um, we had a meeting with the, the mayor, which we will talk about, uh, and also responded to calls, two calls from uh, Commissioner Richardson with regard to the recommendations uh, for revisions in the ordinance. Uh, so responded to his calls and questions. Um, and had one uh, record public record request uh, from a gentleman by the name of John Mitchell who wanted all the information on cases involving uh, the city manager going back to October of 2019. We provide that information. He has also asked for the public, the board's meeting on that proper cause hearing, and we're going to provide that to him. Um, so we're, we're still a little busy. Um, you have a copy of the budget. Uh, it's a good time for you when we talk yeah. about spending money. Um, the budget pretty much looks very normal. You see where we anticipate uh, spending $3,310 for training in August, and that will close out the expense for developing the online ethics course. Um, monthly issue report, we were busy. That's um, 715, we received a complaint. The person asked that I return the call. Uh, they referenced an appointed attorney, which healed me that they would probably call the wrong number. I did try calling them back more than once. Eventually, I got something from Verizon saying that the phone was uh, the, the number was not active. Um, that's I'm recommending we close that one. Um, Mr. Simpson, an informal complaint to the ethics email address and copies numerous senior county officials and others. His complaint was of abuse of power by the mayor and acts against his freedom. Uh, John and I both interpreted that in the same manner as the complaint he gave to the board in May um, and similar complaints. Uh, we drafted a response, uh, which I copied all of you on, and um, I recommend closing that one. Um, also had a video conference with Mr. Sims, and he gave a separate complaint about, about the mayor's brother, um, threatening him and his family. Uh, I recommended that he call the police department. He told me he already had, so there was nothing for us to do there because that, again, that was outside of our jurisdiction. So I recommended closing that one. I received an email complaint from a resident alleging harassment, threats, and property breaches by uh, um, and two employees of Star Metro. Uh, he stated that one of the employees, or she stated one of the employees was arrested for beating her, and <coughs> she already addressed it with the police department, and she uh, made other allegations. I referred this one, uh, with her permission, I referred this one to the school's <coughs> office, and uh, we had a conversation that we're interested in their following up. And so I recommend closing that one. And that complete my, completes my report, um, asking for approval to close these cases. All right, any comments on the summary report given by the ethics officer? Any comments on the monthly budget report? Any comments on the monthly complaint report? If there's no further comments, is there a motion to accept the office report given by the ethics officer? So moved. 
Mr. Smith moves. Second. Mr. Payne seconds. Any comment? Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 As opposed? Motion passes. <coughs> Moving on to old business. We have an update on recommendations to the city commission. <coughs> so, I guess I'm going to start. Uh, I was part of a discussion with the mayor, our board attorney, Mr. Reed, and our ethics officers was participating in that discussion. I think it was last week, if I'm not mistaken. And basically we reviewed the letter, cover letter, and the proposed ordinances we present, were presenting to the commission. As far as the language of the ordinance itself, I think there was only one or two comments on that issue itself, one being the language that we discuss about paid or unpaid uh, when it comes to the, division of the, the definition of lobbyist and the recommendation to include uh, future compensation as well as a possible uh, criteria for lobbying as well. Other than that, I, not much comments on the actual ordinance, more comments on the cover letter and our approach, but I feel that I think our approach was proper. Uh, comments were accurate as far as why we took the steps we did. Uh, at this time, you know, when you hear the other comments from the other commissioners, my approach will be to take this in consideration, possibly make any uh, changes, submit it one more time, and that's it. No more, I don't think we have these means again. I think we heard the comments as, as they are. If we can those comments <coughs> help us improve the ordinance, we will take we'll take consideration, make those changes, submit it. But that's it at that point. It's in their their hands. It's again a recommendation from the board. They can take it or leave it, make their changes as they seem fit. But we're not. I don't feel after this round we're not going back back and forth in these discussions. But Mr. Reed, Mr. Floyd, any other comments on this? No, I think the issue of the compensation, I think the concern that was raised was um, we didn't want to cast the net so wide that we inadvertently caught private citizens acting as private citizens simply petitioning their government, which we mentioned to the mayor that was uh, something we had taken pains to try to avoid, and we would take another look at it. He made very good recommendations, and, and I think it was a very positive. Mr. Floyd, any so, are there any more planned? I, th I think John's going to work on it, and we'll bring it back to the review in September. So number, and then we'll move forward with it. Sounds good. And we also mentioned to him other recommendations uh, on the oil, uh, misuse of position, uh, so he'd know that was coming, and uh, hopefully be welcoming to that one. Um, but as far as yeah, we'll be presented how many pages of ordinance? Twenty pages, and I think. Comments on just three or two lines. So right. most of it was about the letter. Most of the letter, but that's fine. It's our, it's our, okay. Any more discussion on this matter? Any questions? Yeah. No. All right. Uh, since we're postponing agenda item number eight, we're moving on to agenda item number nine: draft of 2021 annual report. Okay. And first, I want to thank. Um, Attorney Blank for reviewing it a couple of times and giving me feedback. Uh, it's always helpful to have someone provide feedback um, through the work uh, to help make improvements. Um, running through it right quick, and this was just, uh, first of all, the last report was February of 2020. Um, from what I've researched and from what I believe, the annual report should coincide with the fiscal year. So I held on to it until this time with the intent of giving you a draft so you can give me feedback, you can make changes, and then I'll bring it back in September with the changes. Um, at that time, hopefully you'll be ready to approve it and present it to the, to the um, commissioner, city commission members in the mayor. I think it's um, in my personal professional opinion, I, um, I think it represents uh, a great deal of success by the board, um, and um, I, that's what I tried to show. Um, I did 
throw your pictures in there. I actually even threw mine in there. Um, <laughs> you want yours? No, no, it's... <laughs> I need to punish them. <laughs> um, and then I just try to put a summary. And my question would be, and, I, and I'll get to Mr. Um, Wilcox coming in a minute, but is there anything um, that you think I left out? I really do think you should put this in this picture. I think you should. Okay. Tell me he has the web. Tell him, tell him he has the web. I always stand with a tie. Go on. <laughs> and, and, and Lucy. Okay. We can do that. Can you send me a picture, dude? Did you send me a picture? Did you send me a picture? I will. <laughs> Any comments at this time on the annual report? Um, not on, on um, Mr. Wilcox. And, and all I was trying to do, and I may have gotten it wrong, and I'm, and I'm, I'm really okay with that, I did. Um, but what I was just trying to show that there was an impact. Um, and um, because we were, I think we were dealing with um, waste and, and all the other things. That's what I was referring to, those Things that, um, and even fraud was a part. Fraud and ethics was a part of our um, hotline title, um, but now the fraud, waste, abuse, etc. With the exception of the elected officials, uh, that now goes to the intelligence to the um, IG's office. So that was what I'm trying to say, and, and maybe there's a better way to say it. I was just trying to show the impact. So. Uh, if you have something you want to forward and send it to me, I'll be welcome. Uh, no, anyway. I think that's a fair solution. Mm -hmm. And I will add, I'm going to add all of the, I'm listing investigations and, um, and give more information on where I have complaints. So it'll be full report. I'm planning on printing some. Um, because uh, and put in the addendum the ethics guide and the strategic plan, knowing that some of these people will probably not even look at it if it wasn't handed to them. So I want them to see that they can see our goals and see our effort. That's all I have on that. Any comments from the board? Mr. Floyd, for the work you've done on this, and Ms. Yeah. Ms. Blank for helping. Uh, moving on to public comment on non agenda items, Mr. Floyd. Uh, Mr. Stanley Sims. Mr. Sims. My name is Stanley Sims. I'm at 1320 Avondale Way. Before my clarification, I'd like to ask Mr. Reed a question before my comment. Do you have the authority to dismiss something with prejudice? Uh, yes. And explain that to me. What? Dismissing with prejudice? No, explain your authority to dismiss something with prejudice. Well, it may, if, Not what it may. Explain your authority. The letter you sent me says dismiss with prejudice. Did I send you the letter? Yeah, you did. For me? Mr. Floyd. Oh, Mr. Floyd. Okay. Y'all yes, work, y'all a team. Dismiss okay. with prejudice. So I'd like to know what is your authority to dismiss something with prejudice or his authority? Do, do you have that authority to dismiss something with prejudice? <coughs> yes. And how is that? Um, charter ordinances. So if I, my point is this. When I receive a very inappropriate call from the mayor's brother, ma'am, my son is involved in this matter, my 21-year-old son, because Mr. Dwight sent me such an aggressive letter 
aggressive, and then had the audacity to take the sensitivity that Ms. Barr gave me at this last meeting and use it to deter me from coming back. Like I told Ms. Barr, and I thanked her for her comments. I understand that a lot of the issues that my family, and I said, not me, my family is facing is out of your jurisdiction. But like I said, I come and tell you guys because it helps because it brings a light to the situation. Because Mr. Dwight's letter was so aggressive, so insensitive to my issue, when I spoke to him on Zoom, he didn't treat me like he treated that lady who had an issue and they were fighting and it really wasn't involving him, but he showed compassion and he referred them to the next person. The way he talked to me, and his sniggers there. I went, he sent this letter on the 20th. Dennis, because I called Dennis, the auditor, and told him about our conversation and how he may have misinterpreted what Dennis had told him because some of the things he said to me, when this is a letter, that Dennis sent to me, letting me know that his summary was not correct. This is a letter justifying that I have an issue of concern and the IG's office has a legitimately complaint involving me and my son. And Gwen, my wife is so terrified, she don't even want to go now. Because when I reached out to him for help, when this man called me, he treated me like I was the enemy of the state. And then when I said, what will you, and even threatened me with, I'm tired of you coming with these frivolous, these were his words. I'm tired of you coming with these frivolous claims. Ain't nothing frivolous when you pulling snakes out of your mailbox. Four Gwen in six months. Four. So I take the lid off of my mailbox. Ain't nothing frivolous about that. This is proof, Mr. Floyd. And whether you like it or not, I fall hard to establish this board. In my three minutes, or my three minutes. And if you can help me, help me. But this is an educational piece. And I pray to God that you do not treat anyone else like you treat me. I've already responded, so I don't have anything to say. I think you should, because they sent me a letter, Gwen, as if, I don't know how to say this other day, if I come back in here with another complaint, they were going to spank my behind or put me in jail. That's the way this letter, the way he talked to me. Stanley, I've seen that letter. Um, it was it was very aggressive. I, I, I've read the letter. And, and I had two attorneys to look at the letter, one from the NAACP, and I won't say the other private one. And it was aggressive. Stanley, I... I don't know when you and I first met. I know it was when I started at the school board a while ago. And throughout the years, I have always wanted and I, to be someone that could help you and work with you. I hope you know that. And I think Mr. Floyd is doing a phenomenal job. And his responsibility, Stanley, don't roll your eyes at me, please. 
his responsibility is to follow the, what we operate under as the ethics board. And I think that's, I haven't seen the letter from the inspector general. I'd love to take a look at it. But if that ended up with the inspector general as the appropriate place that has jurisdiction over this, then I'm, I'm glad that that worked out for you. And I'll be interested to know how, what the outcome is. But I will say, as your friend, and at the beginning of this meeting, you know, I do care about you. Um, and I'm saying this not, not as a member of this board so much, as, but as your friend, that I think we would all love if we could solve the issues that you face. But it gets to the point where you're just not, this is not the right body for the issues that you face. So there does, there does develop a level of frustration. I'm not speaking for Mr. Floyd. I'm speaking for my general experience with you in the last decade plus. And, you know, I, I really, I've advised you, I've talked to you, my husband has advised you and has talked to you, and I will always be here to try to help you if I can, okay? But that's in the if I can category, not, not as a member of this, of this board so much, but as a, as a friend, as someone who cares about you and wishes that so much that you face that there was a way of resolving it for you. And I say that from my heart, okay? Okay? I, I mean, it's much more than just today, and you know that. Mr. Chair. Yes, Ms. Barr. I may respond. Uh, Mr. Stanley. I love you. Again, I apologize that you were offended by whatever was in that letter. I, I, I didn't see the letter. But I think it comes a point in time that if you really want something to be resolved, then you have to take it to the person that has the ability to resolve it. Otherwise, when there's this repeated pattern of bringing items before any agency or board that does not have the ability nor the authority, to address or resolve those issues. It is just something that's being done in vain. And after a while, it will have a negative impact against you and the body that you bring it before. And I really think that taking something to an attorney after the fact might be better suited for you if you take it to the attorney before the situation. Um, I'm just not hearing about snakes in a mailbox. And again, uh, I don't have the history with you that um, former Congresswoman Graham has, but I can say this, that <clears throat> venting and, and, and repeating your frustrations to a board such as ours that does not have the ability nor the authority, and sometimes we don't even have the knowledge of these other things that are happening to you, you're putting us in, a, in a, a precarious position because it becomes a balancing act that while we, we respect the right to file a complaint, but to file it before the proper um, body. And then it's also a balancing act because we don't, nobody wants to offend you. Right. We really don't. But after a while, and, and you know as well as I do, enough is enough. Really and, and, and so Barr, now, I, I, if I, there I, are people that have offered to help, and, well, I, I just heard former Congresswoman Graham say that, you know, she and her husband, both of them are attorneys that have talked with you. And I'm sure that after this long period of time that you've known, that it, it, even the last time there was an issue that you brought up that, I don't know if he was here or, I'm not quite sure, I can't remember right now, but it was something that would have had to have gone to the Department of Transportation because even the school board with some traffic signs or no, whatnot, not that wasn't their responsibility. The school that wasn't board. Me. You sure I'm about a, a traffic My sign? My issue has been one issue for the last four and a half years. Well, with respect to a traffic, uh, a school crossing light no, or whatever. I've never had. Okay, well, the thing is, is that you have to take your situations before the proper authorities, and that's just what I'm saying. And so, again, I apologize even on behalf of of uh, Mr. Floyd that the letter was, you know, perceived as being aggressive. But the truth of the matter is, is that, you know, 
we really just don't have the authority to address it. And I'll tell you what will happen in, in regular court where, where I practice, right across the street. Not only will those judges, not only do they have the authority to um, file something with prejudice, means never ever bring it up again, but you can be banned from that courthouse. Exactly. And they can take even further action. Uh, and that's why I was afraid so. that this was going. And, 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 and I concur 400% with every word you have just said. And I agree with you. I think it's correct. But I don't have a law degree. I had the wrong conception of what this boy could do. And you all have educated me in what your powers are. But I want you to not take your knowledge and my knowledge. And because I come every day, you get a call, an inappropriate call from the mayor's brother. And I reach out to the ethics board and get this was not the type letter at the time to go all the way back down memory lane to say, stop lying. Are you lying that he called because you did this, you did that? That's what I felt was unacceptable. And, and I, I don't want to. I don't want to stop you, but I, because I, I we've gone beyond our time. You've already addressed that, and I think that that's something that needs to be addressed outside the venue. So it's a per, now it's a personal problem. I think it's a Thank policy you. problem. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I would just make note that the discussion on the marriage brother happened after the letter and was listened to and addressed. Uh, I would also note that the Inspector General's office and I, um, we confer on these issues and we did talk. Yeah, um, but you misrepresented what I didn't say. As far as addressing the board right now, we, we, we talk about anything that's between the two of us. We we communicate on those. So um, we we did communicate on these issues. And, you know, if uh, if you were offended uh, by the letter, I do apologize for that because that's not my intent. Uh, but I understand the work of the board and um, just trying to. Um, keep us on our agenda, uh, doing what we do, and uh, you know that's that's Joan's work, that's my work, and um, it's not intended, it's not personal, um, and Mr. Sims, as well as anybody else, is welcome to bring complaint to the board, and I don't think anybody in this room would disagree with that. Um, but when the board makes a decision, we need to be able to move on, because what happens is that we use resources that cost time and money every time a complaint comes. Um, and we try to respond to people in word and in by letter, and, um, and give them careful consideration. And Mr. Floyd. Thank you, Mr. Floyd. Thank you, Mr. Sim. Any more comments on the items? Wasn't I so formal? Everybody's last time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on to agenda item number 11. And I actually put some items there. Um, it's not in yours, but what I have planned for the next meeting is approval of the annual report, a review of the strategic plan. We'll talk about what we accomplished with the strategic plan and then plan for the next three years. So we're always planning three years out. And um, uh, you'll have opportunity to evaluate my work. We'll bring back the advisory opinion and the day, update you again on where we are with the recommendations to the city commission. So those are the things that I have planned. Chairman, I have a quick question. Sure. 
So would the expectation be that every August we would see a draft and then September we would have an approval consistent with the, the fiscal year? Okay. Is that when we get July off every year? Or maybe <laughs> <laughs> because, because we're good. Yeah. You, you make that decision. Okay. Right. just wanted to, you know we're on that calendar. <laughs> Hold it from last February. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Any comments on agenda item number 11? Any directives from the board? Ms. Blank moves, we adjourn. Ms. Costa seconds. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.